Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello and thank you for joining us on Deeper, your daily Bible study. I am David Salazar and with me is Dr. Tim Ramsey and we will continue the study of the book of Songs of Solomon, specifically today, Wednesday, May 8th. It's titled Love at the Right Time. Before we start, let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come together to study your word, help us to understand and to be able to teach our children, our our own husbands and wives, what it is to be really loving you, what it is to love our family, what it is to have the right time for those that are contemplating marriage. Allow us to study your word in a way that it will help us in our daily lives and to have a practical understanding so that we may be able to teach others to the truth. We pray all this and we thank you for allowing us to come together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Tim, uh, we have today a topic that it's kind of against what the world um, dictates or teaches today. And it's love at the right time. Uh, now, this doesn't seem to be uh, uh, a problem in the Word of God. I mean, the Bible speaks clearly of marriage as an institution made by the Lord. It's a noble institution, a blessing to, to mankind. And within marriage, we have, as we were speaking yesterday, of what knowing means, uh, we have the privileges of intimacy, of being able to become one flesh with our families and with our spouses. But uh, sadly, the world has chosen to f- misuse this word love and uh, obviously all what that is reserved for marriage to be used for pleasure and oftentimes way ahead of time, way ahead of the moment or the right time that the Lord wants for his children to have. Now, um, we have in the book of Proverbs, briefly, we have in chapter 7 and verse 7, if you could read for us there, there is a verse that deals with the problem of youth today, of young people. And uh, and this is not only just of young people, but really those that are not following the Lord's time, but trying to do things in their own in their own time. Would you mind reading it for us? Proverbs 7.7. 7. And I beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding. <laughs> passing through the, or you want me to stop there? No, okay. no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, verse eight goes on, uh, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. So if, if you can, you know, study a little deeper this in your own um, time, uh, you know, it's about a young man who is void of understanding. He's a simple one. And this young man, it's going to the way of a woman who is offering herself to him. And he's, you know, taken by, I guess, the beauty or his impulses, his his, uh, carnal needs, I guess. Nevertheless, this is exactly what's happening today in today's society. We have young people, very young, very, very, very young, uh, doing this type of uh, experiences, experiencing intimacy before marriage, and also not only just young people, but ultimately uh, adults who have had issues in their own lives, they are not really waiting on the Lord. And so we want to talk about what it does it mean to have love at the right time? What does it mean to really be able to uh, wait in the Lord, be able to have that that combination? I actually believe that there is two things uh, for a marriage or a person to to be successful, and I always tell this to to my um, to the young people specifically, they are the ones that seem to be more eager <laughs> per se. But uh, this applies to anyone that is really thinking about m- marrying someone or, or or trying to spend time with someone, uh, especially through marriage. Um, I always tell them that there is two things: you have to find the right person, and it has to be the right time. And unless those two things are really there that right person if it's in the wrong time it's the wrong person and you see it it, it is important that we understand that god has a plan and a time for us 
and we should keep this in mind. Uh, specifically, I, I will read a couple of quotes. Actually, you have also them before you, Tim. But there's a, a quote in the Spirit Prophecy, Advent Home, page 79, that speaks directly to this notion that young people should be uh, in a relationship when they're young or, or, or early on. And it's something that it's not to be encouraged or considered or not to present them before them. They're just not ready. Would you mind reading for us these uh, um, uh, quotes from Spirit Prophecy? Sure. This is from Adventist Home, again, page 79. Early marriages are not to be encouraged. A relation so important as marriage and so far-reaching in its results should not be entered upon hastily without sufficient preparation and before the mental and physical powers are well-developed. Boys and girls enter upon the marriage relation with unripe love, immature judgment, without noble, elevated feelings, and take upon themselves the marriage vows wholly led by their boyish and girlish passions. So let me ask you, or let's discuss a little bit about these these points that uh, Spirit Prophecy brings out. What would it be to not be sufficient, you know, to not to have sufficient preparation or to be sufficient preparation? What is that? What do you think that that's a mean? I mean, is it just maybe uh, mentally having a degree or, or what do you think it includes? Well, it includes a lot. <laughs> um, it certainly in, involves my own preparation, you know, being the right person. And, and that's a huge aspect of finding the right person is that I need to be the right person as well. Right. And so the first aspect of the sufficient preparation is um, reaching that level of maturity and that uh, position in life where, you know, I'm speaking as a man here, I'm able to support my family. Uh, I'm able to provide as I should. Um, I, I have a job or I'm able to hold a job and so forth, but it it's more than that. There's, uh, preparation that needs to happen uh, emotionally, spiritually, and of course, we continue to grow through our lives. Um, <clears throat> and so it's uh, it's not as if one day you wake up and you've arrived, but reaching that level of maturity where you are capable by the Lord's grace of thinking more of others than of yourself, this certainly would be a level of preparation that should be reached. And then we can look very practically at uh, your relationship with this person that you're considering marrying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you know the their personality really? You know, do you know their background? Do you know their goals, their aspirations? Do you know the things they value? You know, what what drives them? What what are those values that really make them tick? Um, all of these aspects are things that need to be uh, should be thought about beforehand, figured out as much as possible beforehand, and taken together, this uh, takes us far down the road of being sufficiently prepared for marriage. That's right. And, you know, I think one of the ways that you can um, know is by by getting a, a feedback of people that know you. You know, are, are, do you feel that I am capable of providing for a family? Do you think I'm capable of of being able to uh, be emotionally, mentally, intellectually capable of leading a family as a husband or you know, or, or as a wife. And, and so I think that this is so important to be able to seek counsel and, and you know, spiritual counsel as you are thinking or as a young person or even as an adult uh, is considering marriage or thinking of someone. I think that, you know, I can gauge uh, a lot of, success or at least uh, more um, more likely success in a marriage, a person that is really willing to seek the advice of spiritual people that can give them a, a guide in, in guidance in, in, in life and in counseling. And, you know, that way the, the evaluation is not on you, on yourself, because you might consider yourself already, you know, all perfect, but that doesn't mean that you are already there yet, you know? And so I think that it's important that you consider seeking counsel to those that know you, seeking counsel to their family, your parents, and also spiritual people that have experience and know whether or not you're ready. So if you have preparation, if you're sufficient prepar you sufficiently prepared, uh, others will see that as well. Now, the, there's also a, a warning in these uh, quotes that we just read 
the unripe love. And I think this is a very important aspect because it it sort of tells you that you might have love, but it's not ripe, is not ready, is not mm-hmm. seasoned. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, what is it you think, Tim, this word means? What what, you, what is your thoughts about this? Well, <clears throat> it would be love that has not faced any real trials or disagreements or other kinds of storms of life. How, do you know how this person is going to react in a certain situation, you know? Do you know how you're going to react hmm. in this given situation? Uh, that would be an unripe love. We could also, you know, imagine a piece of fruit. When it's unripe, it's hard. Um, hmm. Unripe love is love that, you know, is is hard. There's no feeling there for the other person yet. Not real feelings. You know, it's all still focused on me. Right. Uh, Selfish. Unripe love would not have the flavor, the hmm. sweetness that a loving relationship should have. Um, and this one's interesting. Uh, when a piece of fruit is not yet ripe, it is attached very strongly to the vine or the branch that it's growing on. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter two, as Adam is looking at Eve, his, his brand new bride, you know, he says, the man shall leave his father and mother, mm-hmm. you know, our, and it's not just the male, you know, both uh, the man and the woman, are you prepared to to leave certain things behind, which you must do um, when you enter the marriage relationship. If you're not yet ready to leave certain things behind that would be dangerous or a detriment uh, to your marriage, then you're not ready to get married yet. It's still unripe love. And, you know, this could be connected to also the concept of immature judgment. Now, this is not only applicable to young people, uh, immature judgment. I've seen plenty of seasoned adults, uh, people that are already, you know, you know, way into their years that also have a very immature judgment when it comes to choosing the right spouse, especially those that have, for one reason or the other, have been, uh, were in a marriage before and now are single and they're looking for a second chance to love or what, whatever you're going to call it. Uh, you know, it's many times they make terrible mistakes. And part of the problem, again, is they're not their, their judgment is immature uh, or there's their love is unripe. So, you know, this is something we have to keep in mind. It, it takes time to learn to, to know somebody who really is. And it, again, to me, it's so important that you seek the advice and the counsel of someone else of experience, a spiritually, uh, you know, you know, a person that is spiritually strong that can help you and perceive that, you know, and I think that oftentimes we forget to do that and we end up choosing for ourselves, just like Samson did, you know, choosing those that only attract me physically. And ultimately in me comes a a problem, a snare that that Satan can use to to destroy us ultimately. Uh, And so that's why we are to have these, 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 these noble elevated feelings. Now, what does that mean to have elevated feelings if and you have only about a few minutes, a few seconds, Tim. Tell us what is that? Oh, oh the pressure. Um, <laughs> well, you know, relationships often start with infatuation. And uh, those need time to mature and ripen into the uh, more elevated emotions and feelings that can safeguard a marriage and give it a firm platform uh, that it can ride the storms of life on. And... Uh, that doesn't happen immediately, but it does happen over time. And that's another reason not to rush this move into marriage. Amen. Well, we are really sadly running out of time. And we thank you for listening to our program. We ask that you will continue to study the God's word. And as we seek him, may we always seek his counsel in our lives. We will see you again tomorrow. God bless you. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.